Hi, everyone. Did y'all just finish up with a, with a class? Okay, so everyone, like most everyone who's in here, hi, Sophia. Most everyone in here just did asana. That's, no, okay. Can you like write in the chat if you just practiced or just so I can get a feel for, um, yeah, where everyone's at right now. To not practice. Okay, 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 cool. Noelle just practiced. Nice. Okay, that's enough answers. We'll go off that. Um, so the class is called um, Heart of Ashtanga or Threads of Ashtanga. Let's see. So Okay, Sophia, I'm sorry, this might be a little repetitive for you. You might have seen some of this before, but we're just gonna go over the Yoga Sutras real brief, um, briefly here. Ha has anyone read the Yoga Sutras or studied them before? Not really, okay. Um, yeah, we'll do a little bit of lecture and then we'll do some Ashtanga yoga. Um, okay, so let's go back a little bit just to back it up to look at where the yoga sutras fall. Nice. Which translation is that? You can like write it in the chat if you want. Um, there's a bunch of different translations. We'll get there. But um, this is the time period in which it comes what came before this, all of this, right? The Vedas, the time of the Buddha, the Upanishads, um, all of this here, and even everything that comes before it when things weren't being written down and um, everything was passed down orally. Humans weren't really writing books at that point. Um, but all of this, um, not so much like a system of yoga, you know, the Rig Veda sort of suggests these mystical traditions. Um, then you see like one of the Upanishads starts to introduce mantra repetition. I think some of them start to talk about the austerities, you know, um, but there, it's not, none of these texts are putting yoga together as um, a step-by-step -step process or like how to reach the state of yoga, right? And then the yoga sutras are written and that's kind of what it's doing, right? Um, there's some other stuff there we won't talk about right now, but the sutras are 196 brief statements, right? And as I said, they've been translated many times. So you have to keep that in mind, um, maybe read a few different translations. Sanskrit is, is, a, is um, a vibrational language. So maybe some things get lost in the, t in the timeline, you know, in the scope, scope of history, the context, and then with us trying to put it into English. Um, we don't know if Patanjali was a single person or multiple beings or who knows. Um, so let's, let's look at it a little bit. This is the first sutra. Now the teaching on yoga begins. We're just gonna kind of move through these very, very quickly. Um, we can go, we could spend like all class on one, but we'll just kind of touch on them. Now the teaching on yoga begins. Um, some might say that there has been a little bit of preparation to get you here or something happened in your life to allow you to encounter yoga and to kind of like step on that path, right? Something brought you to your to the yoga. Um, and now it begins. Now the second sutra is saying, what is yoga? Yoga chitti vritti nirodha. It is the settling. These are a few different translations and I'll share with you the different um, texts at the end. Yoga is the settling of the mind into silence. They're, they're saying chitta is mine or yoga is the mastery of the modifications of the mind field or 
yoga is the cessation of the turning of thought, right? Now, the next one is saying, when, when that happens, when we are in a state of yoga, um, when the thoughts have settled, we are established in our essential nature. And what's our essential nature? Unbounded consciousness. Our essential nature is, is one of an observer, right? That version, perfect, yeah. Right, so this is the idea of, this is our true nature. That's what yoga is saying. This is when we are in a state of yoga, we are identifying with this. We are not identifying with the nature of the mind right? That our essential nature, this idea of us being um, pure consciousness is usually overshadowed by the mind stuff, by the thoughts and by the ripples. We identify with the ripples, right? Rather than with the idea of being the ocean or the pond, you know? Those first four kind of lay out a lot of like, this is what yoga is right? Um, not only is it a, a state, but it's, it's a practice too. And, and um, Patanjali is going to continue to expand on that. And how do we, how do we practice this? Uh, we're going to skip over a few. It, this one is nice. It notes that that practice, um, or how you attain this, the state of yoga is practice and non-attachment. So constant effort in a way, and also constantly letting go. It's, you need it both, right? Those are those, the two words, abhyasa and varaga, practice and letting go. And we're specifically trying to move towards the state of stable tranquility. So we're letting go of the things that take us away from that. And we're practicing the things that bring us to a state of stability. Stable tranquility is like, if this is what you're practicing, this is the most important thing. Right? It's with you at all times. With every decision you make, you're moving in the direction of, of peace and equanimity. And that can be difficult to do with every, like, you know, every single action. Um, we're going to skip ahead a little bit and go to the obstacles. So there's the sutras outline some obstacles that we are bound to encounter. When we when we practice yoga, or when we try to when we try to like stay in this state of stable tranquility, shit's gonna come up and knock us off that path. Some of these things: disease, illness, injury, right, um, dullness or procrastination, mental laziness, doubt, indecision. carelessness, and you have physical laziness. Misperception, misunderstanding, craving, usually the craving of the senses, you know, craving foods and craving touch and whatever it is failure. And then the last one is the, the slipping from ground gain. You know, once you attain something, you still need to do some work to maintain that, right? Like you're never, you're never really done with, with the work. It's like use it or lose it, right? Now, 
they're in here because it's it's obviously part of the path, right? And he says the next sutra says to prevent or deal with these obstacles and and the the four consequences that come with them. The recommendation is to make the mind one pointed, training it how to focus on a single principle or object. Right. So now we kind of just with the ones that we've looked at, we kind of have an idea of what what yoga is and what prevents us from being there, right? Misidentification. And then we have an idea of, now we're kind of looking at how to practice it. Make the mind one point to focus on, on one thing. He's gonna outline some ideas for you know making the mind one pointed. First, this one I think is one of the most important sutras. Um, it's really useful, it's practical. The mind becomes clear and serene when the qualities of the heart are cultivated. Friendliness towards the joyful, compassion toward the suffering, happiness toward the pure, and impartiality toward the impure. I've also heard disregard the wicked. These are said to be the, like the four keys. So with any situation or any, any person you, you encounter, these are the, the like keys to kind of unlock that, um, that experience, you know, without agitating the mind or moving away from tranquility. So that's one way to start to make the mind calm, clear, serene, one pointed. The next, I think it's the next, yeah. The next he says is, if you can't do that, you can calm the mind by regulating the breath, right? So you can cultivate the qualities of the heart or work with the breath. Or the next is contemplate on an object that helps to maintain steadiness of mind or consciousness, any object. Or you concentrate on the luminous light within. Okay. Or this one's nice. You can, you can contemplate any any like wise being or anyone that you kind of like admire um, could be the Buddha, could be Mary Magdalene, whomever you see, if you see, or you know of a being that you kind of, you want some of those qualities, if they have that, the quality of peace and compassion and uh, whatever it is, you, you put your mind on them, right? Over and over again. Okay, if that doesn't work for you, you can contemplate on the experiences in the dream state, right? Like lucid dreaming. Okay, if that doesn't work, let's see. If that doesn't work. You can concentrate on whatever, whatever object or whatever you're predisposed to, because all of us have maybe a different predisposition. So it's not like a one size fits all thing. He's giving different options. And th this final one is like, just do whatever you have to do to make your mind stable and tranquil and one pointed. Okay, hooray. So let's see. We're gonna just hop into the next book real quick. So that all that all of those sutras come from the first book, which just kind of outlines what yoga is and maybe just get a taste of how we're gonna to start to practice it. Now the next book is going continuing on it, this this practicing yoga. How do we how do we walk the path of yoga? The first sutra lays it out: um, tapas, svajaya. Ishvara Pranidhana is Kriya Yoga, is what it says. Um, these are the practical steps. Have you seen these before? 
They're also um, the niyamas, okay? Tapas has something to do with, we'll look at them next, I think. Tapas has something to do with heat and friction and discipline. It might be, you know, it could be your asana practice or your pranayama practice, um, something that will like burn away what's not needed, right? It, yes, yeah, it's, it's discipline. It can be like the hard work, the grit. Uh, svajaya is the self-study. Traditionally, this would be through study, most likely with the teacher, but also with texts, um, any of the spiritual texts. Um, and it's, it's not just like reading the book front to back and putting it away and being done with it. Maybe with specifically with the sutras or some of these other, um, some, of the, some of these other books, you can just pick it up, read a line and like meditate on it or use it as your, you know, like as a practice throughout your day. If you read it at, at one point of your life, you know, and then you pick it up 10 years later, you're probably gonna relate to different things in a different way. Um, so that's kind of this idea of svajaya, this ongoing self-inquiry, right? Um, and then Ishvara Pranidana is the idea of surrender. Maybe more traditionally, it was specifically to God, um, but it could also mean, you know, surrender to whatever you, whatever you choose. Patanjali already said that, that that's okay, right? Um, okay, we're gonna move along and just look at the, the idea of asana next, because then we'll just practice a little bit. I think that's good. Yeah, okay. So there are eight limbs of yoga. Have you heard of this? Okay. <laughs> the eight limbs of yoga, that's Ashtanga yoga. Ashtao is eight, Anga is limbs. So are we seeing this all come together a little? Okay. Um, the, the yoga sutras are sometimes referred to as Patanjali's Ashtanga yoga. There, it's, it's also a form of Raja yoga, R-A-J-A, -A, and that means royal yoga. This, this is a yoga of the mind, right? If you could tell, so far everything is just about the mind. Um, later on comes Hatha yoga, and that's when we see more of the, the physical exercises and the vigorous cleansing techniques, the shot kriyas, and you know, a little bit more work with the body in Hatha yoga. But first, it starts maybe more subtle with the mind. Um, the royal yoga. So the eight limbs, here they are. Yama, niyama, asana, pranayama, prachahara, dharana, dhyana, samadhi. Okay, this may be one other way to say them. It's hard to just take them into one word, but we'll get a sense. Um, do y'all know the yamas and the niyamas? Okay, we have some yeses and some noes. We'll just touch on them briefly. Okay, so the yamas, they, they could be like restraints. Um, the first one is non-harming. It's non-violence in thought, word, and deed. Thought has the most potential. It's the seed form. If you think it, if you think it over and over again, you're, it's probably going to happen. If you're thinking something, you're probably going to do it, right? Um, so compassion in thought, word, and deed. This can be practiced by seeing yourself in the other. The next is non-stealing. Non-stealing, obviously, now in thought, word, and deed. So eavesdropping could be a form of stealing. It's not your conversation to be a part of. You're, okay. Um, little things that you might steal. You just start to observe. If you're stealing somebody's time, 
truthfulness is satcha. So living in alignment with your truth and maybe honoring your word and your integrity. And then also maybe knowing that there's a truth that's greater than you. I don't know. Okay, the next one, brahmacharya, it's often translated to celibacy. It could also mean like walking in awareness of the highest nature or something. Brahma is it's like the creator, the, the yeah, the creator um, in, in the myths and stuff. So charya is the wheel. So like what, like it's, it's how you use your energy, I think too. Um, that's like where the celibacy comes from. You're like, they don't want you to give away your, your most like potent stuff. Um, but then in terms of like how you're, how you're using your energy and how you're wasting it probably on some things. Um, and then the last one, Aparigraha is this idea of non-hoarding. Again, thought, word, and deed. Um, non-grasping. It's like not, you don't want to be reaching out constantly for things, but then you also don't want to be like hoarding the things that you have. There's a tarot card that's like that. And it's like, you're just sitting there with all your stuff, whether it's your thoughts or your ideas about how things are or, or your physical stuff. Okay, now the next is the niyamas. These are more of like the observances the first one is purity or cleanliness. It's pretty obvious. You probably brushed your teeth this morning. You keep your body clean. You wear clean clothes. If you don't, you you like you don't feel good, right? Um, tapas. We see that again. The discipline. The heat needed. The santosha is contentment. It's not really complacency, but this idea of accepting what is, right? Svajaya and Ishvara Pranitana, we talked about a little bit already, right? Any questions so far? If there's anything. Okay. Um, we'll just look at one more because I like this sutra too. This one is also, I think, helpful in real life. It's this concept of Pradipaksha Bhavanam. Um, so what it's basically saying is when you have difficulty observing any of the, you know, the, the virtues, when you have difficulty being a almighty virtuous person at all times um just try to do the opposite so if you find yourself falling into you know hate or maybe hate is a good one to start with you you don't need to jump all the way to like compassion i love everyone everything is perfect and blissful but just don't keep moving towards hate, you know, just take one step in the opposite direction. And this, I think being able to do this comes from also being able to pause and be less reactive. And that's what, what we're also doing through the yoga practice. And we're trying to become more of an observer, right? Like, like he said in the beginning, not reacting at every single thing that, that comes up in our lives. Um, we have the ability to, and not being like controlled by those reactions too. We, we do have the power to, to pause and make a, a decision that, that serves us. Um, okay, so here's the part on the asana. The physical posture should be steady and comfortable. You might've heard the concept of stira sukha before. Steady and easeful right? You want a nice balance of effort and letting go. A lot of the stuff in the sutras is like kind of repetitive, the same themes. Um, yeah, just 
just like don't don't strive too hard but don't be too lazy in the pose the next one says they are mastered when effort is relaxed and the mind is absorbed in the infinite so you think of like of athletes or anyone who makes something look really easy that's actually fucking very hard right that's like that's mastery so i don't know that's cool and then we are no longer upset by the play of opposites so you know i think what was the last one yeah maybe maybe being in the poses we're trying to to again be this neutral observer and not not react to everything that comes up while we're in the pose and being okay with any condition that we're in. So we'd start by doing that in the, in the posture. So we put ourselves in this shape. We, we just breathe and observe and let it be okay. You know, not grasp, not grasping too much, not over efforting, not needing anything more than what we have. Um, and then I think like also just, you know, you might like back bends more than you like forward folds. You might like the summer more than you like the winter. And then we just start to like see our preferences for things and not be so fixated on them. Okay, so I think we can do a little bit of asana now. Thanks for reading the yoga sutras with me. That was sort of flew through those. Um, Okay, any questions you can let me know. If y'all want to do some practice, you can set your mats up. And so we'll do a little bit of Ashtanga yoga, um, Patabi Joyce Ashtanga yoga, really. Um, I think you guys had class with Sam this morning. Did, did anyone take that? No. Okay. <laughs> so. Mm. Some, some, um, some like teachers and interpreters of the, the book say that the, the compassion like trumps truth. So ahimsa is the umbrella. If you follow ahimsa perfectly, all of the others perfect, right? Um, the, there's a few other things. I guess I, this is what happens when I try to fly through them. I missed a lot. So the other idea with the yamas and the niyamas that I didn't really talk about that I think is important is you can look at them two ways. You can look at them as if um, these are things you need to practice. These are things you need to try to do in your life, like in order to, to reach yoga, right? And the other idea is that these, these just happen naturally when you're practicing yoga, when you're in a state of yoga. Does that make sense? It, like when, when the mind is, is, more identified with this idea of the observer, the unbounded consciousness, you're naturally going to be compassionate, right? You're, you're naturally going to use your energy wisely. You're not really operating from the same level of like, of even fear or ego or like protection of yourself because you're not in this small self kind of personality, right? You're not identified with the, the story of you so much. Um, but I don't, I don't know exactly, you know, I think nonviolent communication, have you heard of that? Is a good, is a good um, supplemental resource for all yogis and people who are working with conflict, which all of us are, it's, it's going to come up in our personal lives at some point. So I'm going to write that in the chat. 
There's a book by, I think, Marshall Rosenberg, and there's also courses on nonviolent communication. So with, like thinking of Ahimsa and Satcha, and this idea of um, being truthful and also being compassionate, especially with our word, the nonviolent communication is good. Love it. Yeah, the um, it's, you said that it's easy to take on others' pain while trying to be in line with ahimsa. Um, I heard once one of my teachers say, it's kind of like, it might be a polarizing viewpoint, but she was like, she said, um, like, you can't really take on people's pain if, like, this, if, if we are the unbounded consciousness, then like your pain is already my pain, you know? So it's not like I'm taking on anything new. I might be more aware of it or more conscious of it, but this idea of like unity consciousness, like yours is already mine. Even if I don't even, you know, we don't even need to connect to know that. Um, I don't know. I, maybe there's there's more to that one. Um, but I think also with that, maybe I'm just going to go off on a little tangent. It, yeah, and it the I think more than taking on other people's pain is you got it. Um, I think also more than taking on people's pain is taking on people's thoughts um, because that happens, taking on people's ideas and thoughts and then identifying with those, right? Because we're already identifying, that's what the Yoga Sutras is saying. We identify with our thoughts and with these, just the ripples, the mind stuff, um, rather than identifying with something like just pure consciousness. So. If then we're also identifying with somebody else's shit, it, it, you know, that gets overwhelming and you don't know what's yours and what's somebody else's and where you picked it up. Maybe you have, um, yeah. Oh, that's, that's cool. Did everyone see that? Emotional pain is living in the past or future, which doesn't technically exist. Um, but yeah, like you might have a thought or an idea, <laughs> thanks, a thought or an idea, um, from like 10 years ago or something that is is not yours. Um, so that's maybe something we can take on and be conscious of. Um, I don't share too, too much on my IG, but thanks, Sophia. Um, what's the IG? What's the website? Okay, thanks. Um, so, yeah, it's been kind of nice talking. Thanks for being here, everyone. Um, <laughs> do we want to do some movement now? Yeah, okay, cool. All right, so if you want, you can stand up. We'll start at the top of the mat. Otherwise, you can just hang out. Okay, yeah, take your time. So we're gonna start with sun salutations. The, the things we have to make the mind one-pointed in the in the Ashtanga Vinyasa tradition, we have breath, we have the state of Vyasa, the pose, and we have the gaze. So you can just keep all of those in mind as you move through the practice, the breathing, the gazing, and the pose, steady, right? So start at the top of the mat. You can hear me okay? I think so. All right. We'll get right into it. First, inhale, reach your arms up. Palms touch, lift your thumbs. Exhale, fold. You can bend your knees. 
tuck your chin. Inhale, lift your head up, look forward. Step back to a plank. You can lower the knees, chest, chin, or the push-up position. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Establish a rhythm through your breath. In and out of your nose with rhythm and sound. Soften your knees, look forward. Inhale, step or hop to the top, head up. Exhale, fold. You can bend your knees, tuck your chin. Inhale, reach your arms up, palms touch, lift your thumbs. Exhale, arms down. Samasthiti, standing pose. Akam, inhale, reach up, look to your thumbs. May exhale, fold down, release your head. Trini, inhale, head up, look forward. Chatwari, exhale, step or jump back, lower down. Chaturanga or knees, chest, chin. Inhale, pancha, cobra or up dog. Chat, exhale, hips up and back. Aramukha, Svanasana. Breathing, no strain, no pain. Soften your knees. Inhale, step or hop to the top. Exhale, release the head down. Inhale, stand, arms up, eyes up. Samasthiti, take rest. One more. Eka, inhale, arms up, look up. Very exhale, go down, release the head. Trini, inhale, look forward. Chatwari, exhale, step or float back, lower down your choice. Pancha, inhale, open up. Shot, exhale, up and back, steady, rooted here. You can do anything that you need throughout the practice. Allow the spine to relax, the face soft. Soften the knees. Inhale, step or hop. Head up. Exhale, fold, head down. Inhale, rise up, reach up. Samasitihi, exhale. We'll do two of the sun salutation B. Bend the knees. Akam, inhale. Today, exhale. Trini, inhale, look forward. Chatwari, step or jump back. Lower yourself down. Pancha, inhale, straight arms, lift your chest. Shot, exhale, hips up, Adamukta. Right foot forward. Inhale, warrior pose, look up. Exhale, to the low push up. Bend your elbows, use your legs. Inhale, up dog, exhale down dog, left foot forward, warrior one, reach your arms up, look up, exhale to the push up position, elbows bend back, chest is forward, inhale open, exhale back, breathe through your nose, one, Two, three, four, five. Soften your knees. Inhale, step or hop forward, head up. Exhale, fold, release. 
Bend the knees, inhale, Utkatasana. Samastitihi, arms by your sides. One more just like that. Bend the knees, Ekam, inhale. Convey, exhale, fold it down. Kriini, inhale, look forward. Chatwari, step or float back. Lower down. Pancha, inhale, open. Shot, exhale back. Right foot forward. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, step back. Use your legs. Inhale, open up. Exhale, push back. Other side. Left foot forward. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, go down. Look forward. Inhale, open. Exhale, back. Breathing here. All ten fingers grip the sides of the body long. Breath is deep and full. Soften your knees. Inhale, step or hop. Head up. Exhale, fold, head down. Bend the knees, inhale, Utkatasana, chair. Samasitihi, arms by your sides. Separate your feet about hips distance. Hold your big toes. Inhale, head up, arms are straight. Exhale, bend your elbows. You can bring the crown of the head down towards the floor. Forehead towards the shins. Straighten your arms. Inhale, lift your gaze. Exhale, slide the hands under the feet. Inhale, exhale, fold your body down. Keep breathing through the nose. Find the low belly hollow and the chest sinking lower. Inhale, look forward. You can bend your knees. Release your hands, stand up, feet together. Samasiti. Now step out to your right, about three feet. Take your arms to a T. Turn your right foot to the right. Hold your right big toe for Trikonasana A. Your feet are about maybe three feet apart. And look to the left thumb, even breathing through the nose. Inhale, come up, arms to a T, right foot in, left foot out. Exhale, hold your left big toe. Trikonasana is the triangle. You can look to your right thumb, lean back a little bit. That's it, yeah. Push your right heel down, spine long. Inhale, come up. Rotate left foot in, right foot out. Face the back of the mat. Left hand down, inside or outside of the foot. Right arm reaching up as you push the left hand down. Find a twist. Find length in the torso. Breathing. Inhale, come up and turn the feet. Exhale, right hand down, inside or outside of the foot. It's always okay to micro bend the knee or adjust the feet a little bit wider. And shift the gaze, that's it. Try to lengthen through the crown of the head. Then inhale, come up, bring the arms to the T. Exhale, step to the top, Samasutti. Now the side angle, Parshva Konasana. Step back about five feet. Right, bigger step back, 
arms to a T. Turn the right foot out, bend the right knee. You can try to take the hand outside of the foot, the shoulder, the armpit, and then the ear close. And then the left arm goes over the ear. And if that's too much, you can always bring the forearm up towards the thigh. Root the back foot. Breathing steady through the nose. Inhale, come up. Right foot in, left foot out. Exhale, bend the left knee. Take the hand outside of the foot, the armpit and the knee are close. You can keep the arm reaching straight up or take it over the ear and find the line from the back heel out through the right fingertips. Yeah, if you lift the chin, you can lean back a little bit and let the throat open. Inhale, we come up. Rotate the feet. Now for this one, we twist. You see the pattern. You can always lower the back knee and take the left elbow outside of the right thigh and start here. The elbows are in one line. If you want, the back heel can be, excuse me, the back knee can be up. Easy for you, the back heel is down. If the armpit and the knee are closed, full close. Breathe deep, steady through the nose. As you inhale, come up to the middle position, the arms to the T. And then exhale, prepare for the second sign. You can lower the back knee, right? And bring the elbow, like the armpit, come outside of the thigh. No gaps, no space for air or light to get through. The elbows could be in one line. If the armpit and the knee are closed, we work towards the full pose. Breathe deep through the nose. Inhale, come up, arms to the T. Exhale, so I'm going to take the step to the top of the mat. All right, the next fundamental is the wide-legged fold. Stand to waist. Step out about four feet. Feet face the long side. Yeah, and then place your hands flat. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, walk the hands through your legs. Fingers point forward. Crown of the head down, shoulders somewhat relaxed, breathing through the nose. If you want to play, you're always free to think it up. Now inhale, straight arms set up. Stay as you exhale. Hold your waist, inhale, ride it up. Exhale, inhale, arms out. Exhale, hold your weight. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold it down. Elbows back, tuck your chin. Shift some weight forward. Breathing steady. Now, inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale at the top. Inhale, reach your arms out. Exhale, interlace fingers behind your back. Inhale, lengthen your arms and your spine. Exhale, fold it down. You can tuck your chin at the bottom. Reach your arms away from you. Notice if your back and your heels try to come a little bit forward towards the balls of the feet. You might feel with every exhale, you can access the Udiyama Bandha. Now inhale, rise all the way to stand. Exhale. Inhale, hold your weight. Exhale, hold the big toes. Inhale, straight arms, look ahead. Exhale, elbows go out to the side, the crown of the head down. Deep breathing through the nose, shoulders, relax. You 
Inhale, straight arms, head up, stay as you exhale. Take hands to waist, inhale, stand up. Exhale, step to the top of your mat. Arms by your sides, samasiti. He'll do. Last fundamental is the pyramid pose or parsvo tanasana. Either make fists, push them behind your back, or the palms press behind the back. Inhale, right foot back, rotate. Exhale, fold over your right leg. Look to your right big toe. Distribute the weight. Most of the weight in the right foot, right leg. Inhale, rise, turn. Hold as you exhale, look to your left big toe. Put most of the weight in your left leg. The right chest sinking down. Left low abdomen tucking in. Inhale, come up, feet parallel, arms to a T. Exhale, step to the top, arms by your sides. Let's do one or two of the balancing postures. So the first one is the Utita Hasta, Padangustasana, it's standing hand to big toe. Stand on your left foot, you can hold your right knee. If you want a little bit more, you hold the big toe. Right? If this is easy, the leg is out straight. Too easy, you exhale and fold. Three, five, four, three, good. Two, one, inhale, rise, chest up. Exhale, leg to the right. Look over the left shoulder, breathing. One, two, three, Four, five, inhale, center. Exhale, head down. Inhale, head up. Hands catch the waist, leg stays out for one. Elbows back, chest up, two, three, four, five, release. Second side, right hand holds the weights. You can catch the knee or the toe from the inside or you extend. Exhale, fold if you like. Either the forehead to the knee or the chin towards the shin. Try to find the bandha in the foot, right? Right foot rooting and lifting. Inhale, head up. Exhale, leg out. Look to your right. Breathe steady. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale, center. Exhale, fold. Inhale, head up. Catch your weights. Point the toe. Elbows back for one. Two, three, gazing to infinity, four, five, release. Okay, now you have either the tree, it could be any variation of the tree, like here or on the calf. You can pull the foot up and put it towards the inner thigh. If there's no knee injury or pain, knee joint closed, Either do the leg cradle, right? Or try to place the foot in the lotus. No pain in the knee. You can stay here. The right hand can reach back and hold the left elbow, and it might walk down. If you feel comfortable, you keep walking the hand down. Maybe you catch the foot as you fold. Breathe a few times through your nose. Nice. That was good, Cynthia. Okay. If you're in the fold, 
We inhale, look forward. Exhale, do nothing. Use the inhale to rise up. Exhale, we all release. Now the other side. Left foot, like kickstand on the calf, Whoop. on the thigh, knee joint closed. The leg cradle is a good like midway position towards the lotus, right? Left hand might come behind the back. You can stay here. You might catch the foot as you go down. Exhale to fold, breathe a few times through your nose. Be gentle with the knees. Inhale, lift your head up, stay as you exhale, and inhale, propel yourself up. Exhale, summons to keep. Cool, now we're all at the top of the mat. Inhale, arms up, palms touch, lift your thumbs. Exhale, fold your body down, you can bend the knees. Inhale, look forward, prepare your hands. Step or hop back. Push up. Inhale, Ordha Mukha, upward facing. Exhale, Adha Mukha, downward facing. Soften your knees, step or hop to a chair. Feet together, arms up, palms touch, lift your thumbs, breathe through your nose. One, two, reach the arms, three, bend the knees, four, Five, you can keep your knees bent, place your hands like a foot in front of you, lean forward, try to pick up one or both feet, and then shoot the legs back. Inhale up, exhale back. That transition's quick, but if you keep trying over time, it'll work. Right foot forward, inhale, warrior one. Sometimes this feels like the hardest part of the standing series. Bend your right knee, look up to your thumbs, try to find evenness in the breath, steadiness in the pose. Try to keep the eyes up as you straighten the right leg, rotate your feet, face the back of the mat, exhale, bend the left knee, Virabhadrasana A, warrior one, Steady breathing. Now the warrior two, Virabhadrasana B. You can adjust the feet if you need. Heels might be in a line, or you could have a little bit more space between the feet. Back foot can be pointing a little bit forward. Look to the left fingertip. Now we switch. Inhale, rotate. Exhale, bend, right knee. Steady yourself. And pull up on the pelvic floor, the base of the spine. Shoulders soft, breathe even. Now you place the hands down if you want to try the transition. Slide the right foot back a little bit. The elbows stay a little bent. You bend the right knee. Maybe the back one comes up and you hop. You inhale up, exhale back. Okay, now onto the seat. Bend the knees, jump, step to your seat. We'll wrap it up soon here. Hands are gonna come right next to your hips. Maybe a smidge in front. Push your hands down, push the hips down with the spine out of the pelvis. Chest up, chin down and back, breathing even. Now Paschimottanasana, you hook the big toes. Inhale, look up, think of like a cobra. Exhale, fold, you can bend the elbows. Either take the forehead towards the knees, or the chin towards the shins. Just 
straighten the arms, inhale, lift the head up. Think of like a cobra. Stay as you exhale, then hold your feet. Inhale. Exhale, fold your body down, forehead to knees or chin to shins. Try to stay pushing through the ball of the big toe, drawing the pinky toes back towards the face and the shoulders away from the ears. Inhale, straight arms, lift your chest. Exhale, then release. Take your hands back behind you about six inches. The fingers can point forward. We'll either do the upward plank like here, or you can take the tabletop with the knees bent like this, okay? Choose your variation. Inhale, lift your pelvis up. Push through all parts of your hand. Hands flat. Breathe, gaze over the tip of your nose. Exhale to seat down, cross your shins. You can roll over and plant your hands in front or you plant your hands in front of your hips. Lift, shimmy, step or jump. Exhale into the push-up position. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Bend the knees, look forward. Step or hop to your seat. And then lie down on your back. Take three breaths in Shavasana. Feel like you have an off switch. Now the bridge pose or the wheel pose for Dvadanyarasana. If you would like to make it supportive, you can use a block or your hands to make it more of a supported bridge. Okay. Or the wheel. Plant your feet. Your middle fingers might touch your heels. Inhale, lift your pelvis up. Wiggle your shoulders under your back. Some of you might stay here in the bridge pose. This is good. If you want a little bit more, hands by the ears, as wide as your mat, come up. Gaze over the tip of the nose, breathing. You are the witness to the activities of the body and the mind. Just watch. If you're in the wheel, you can lower halfway and come back up or go down and take reps and then come back up. Breathe. Good. If you're in the wheel, you can lower halfway. And then come back up or lower all the way and rest. Let's do one more. So I'll have a total of three back bends. Don't give the mind or the body too much time to cool down. It's hard to spark it back up again, right? Breathe. Try to count to a number. Set a goal for yourself. Building determination and willpower. Last chance to go up. Okay. As you're ready, you can do the backwards rolling vinyasa or roll forwards. You can do the vinyasa, the up dog and the down dog, or just step to the down dog.
from the down dog, bend your knees, and come onto your seat. Legs can be straight or somewhat bent. You can hold the big toes, the feet, or just let the hands rest. Fold the head down. Concentrate at the base of the spine. Breathing for 10. Nine. Eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. One. Inhale, lift your head up. Exhale, and then release, sitting up. You can cross your legs in an easy seat, or you can put one or both legs into the Padmasana. If you have the Padmasana, you might hold your feet, right? Or you hold a wrist behind your back and just let the shoulders be loose. Exhale the head down. The eyes can be all the way closed or like 90% closed. Try to keep count. 10 inhales and 10 exhales. When you feel or hear 10, inhale, sit up, thumb and index together. You can put the backs of the wrists on the knees. If you need more grounding, the palms face down. Notice yourself breathing through the nose. Neutral observer. Now the last is Utkuti, Utkuti, the lift. You can do it with the Padmasana, the full lotus, or no lotus, you cross your shins. If you have some items, you can always put your hands on blocks. I like them like a little bit in front of my seat. So not right next to the seat, a little bit in front. Shift forward, lift. One, two, you can do it. Three, four, five, steady gaze. Six, seven, spread the shoulder blades. Eight, nine, ten, release. You can lie right down if you want to do another vinyasa, you can do one. And then you lie down for relaxation. Give your body a few minutes of stillness. Allow the breath to be by itself. We'll do a short body scan. You can follow along or tune me out.
when I list a part of the body, you can repeat the name mentally to yourself, put all of your attention there, like it is the only thing that exists. Start at your left thumb. The index finger. Middle finger. Ring finger. Little finger. The palm, the back of the hand, the left forearm, the elbow joint, upper arm and shoulder, the armpit region. Keep concentrating, remain alert, attentive. The left hip joint, seat, groins, by knee joint, leg below the knee, ankle joint, the sole of the foot, the top of the foot, now the big toe, the second toe, middle toe, fourth toe, little toe. Now the left arm and leg are done. Try not to use them, like shutting down a desktop computer. If you move the mouse just a smidge, it starts everything back up. Go to your right thumb, concentrate, right thumb, like it is the only thing that exists. As you put your attention there, the circulation increases, the heat increases. Index finger, middle finger, ring finger, little finger, the palm, the back of the hand, Forearm, elbow joint, upper arm and shoulder joint, the armpit.
Now the right hip joint, the seat, groins, thigh, knee joint, leg below the knee, ankle joint, sole of the foot, top of the foot, keep concentrating, right big toe, second toe, middle toe, the fourth toe, little toe, right arm, right leg are done, the arms, the legs, leg disappearing. Now go to your upper back, shoulder blades, the lower back, pelvis, rib cage, glutes, light. You can imagine, visualize the vital organs, everything working in harmony, no strain. The neck, throat, the back of the head. The front of the head, the muscles of the face, the brow gently separating, eyes, nostrils, upper lip, lower lip. The teeth and the tongue, the jaw loops, left ear inside and out, the right ear inside and out. Get a strong feeling that the best is taking place to recharge, rejuvenate every cell. You can stay in the relaxation for as long as you need.
And when you're ready to come out, become aware of your breath. Do whatever stretches or movements the body is craving. You can stay for as long as you want. When you're ready, find a comfortable seat. Sit tall, close your eyes. We'll close with the Om and the Shanti. Okay. Om. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. You can reach your arms up and bow, sealing your practice. Thank yourself for showing up. Thank each other for showing up. Nice to have community, friends. So thank you for being here. It's been nice to practice and chat. Oh, look at the kitty cat or the dog. Okay, if you have questions, let me know. Thanks, Mariel. Nice to practice with you.